Do you want to learn how to make epic looking face cams like the ones you're seeing on screen right now? Well, keep watching the video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to be going over the tips and strategies that I use to create awesome webcams, and by the end of this video, I hope you'll be able to make them too. So let's get straight into it. Hey, what is going on guys? It's Delvage and today I'm going to be bringing you a video on how to create a face cam border in Photoshop. And this is again one of the tutorials that you guys requested from me in the comment section below. So I'm going to show you how to make them and it's actually not that hard. So the first thing we want to do is go into Photoshop and go to File, New, and I like to make face cams in 1080p just because of the video quality that I usually have on my videos um, or different projects that I'm working on. But if you do record in 720p like I do sometimes, 720p should be fine. But for clients and stuff, I usually like to work with 1080p. So the width will be 1920 and the height will be 1080p. And you can just copy the rest of the settings that I have on screen right here and then click create. I've already done that. And what I've actually done is I've added a gradient into the background just by going to the gradient tool and adding a gradient like I just did right there. And I do this because it's a lot easier to see while you're working. You don't want to have a white or transparent background while you're working on something in Photoshop a lot of the time because it can just be obstructive to your view so I like to create a dark gradient in the background to work on the next thing that I did is I went on Google and I found a game background and the reason why I added this into Photoshop at the very start is because we want a reference to what our face cam is going to look like on a video so this is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio clipping of a video so if you record in something other than 16 by 9 which is not a whole lot of people on YouTube but if you do buy whatever a stretch of the imagination go ahead and choose a background that suits your needs but for me 16 by 9 aspect ratio is the way to go for videos which is why I'm using this as a reference so enough of all that let's get straight into the face cam so the first thing we want to do is create a new layer here at the bottom of your screen and go to the rectangle tool once you have the rectangle tool selected you want to go to the very top of your screen and make sure this is selected into the fill and make sure your stroke is selected to black after that, make sure your point or PT is three and nothing more, nothing less. Three is the way to go and I will show you in a second why. So after we have those settings applied, just click on your screen and change the width from 100 to 480 and the height from 100 to 270. Check the box that says from center and click OK and you will be given a blank rectangle. Let's just close out of the property box, go to the move tool, press Ctrl and T on our keyboards holding shift and alt drag up from the corners just a little bit so we can see what we're working with then click the checkbox and you'll be okay after that I'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing Control and J once I've duplicated the layer I'm gonna go over to the layers panel by double clicking changing a color overlay onto it changing it from black to white and turning the opacity to about 40% click OK after you've done that press Control and T on your keyboard once again and this is where we need to do some fine tuning. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag the top and mid parts of this just enough so that it matches with our other layer. All we have to do is drag it and uh, it should be fairly easy. So I'm gonna do that and I will be right back. Okay guys, so we have dragged our layers to the front. Now the next thing I'm going to do is rasterize the layer. Do not click rasterize layer style, click rasterize layer on both of these. After we finish that, what I'm gonna do is go to the layer at the very top, double click and go back to the blending options, go to the color overlay section, change the color overlay to a black, go to the gradient overlay, and change my gradient to whatever color I want. Now this is where you change the color of your face cam depending on your channel style or live stream style or whatever you are using this face cam for. Um, I'm personally gonna go with red just because I think it looks cool and it's, you know, looks cool, so let's go with that. If you'd like to copy the gradient settings that I'm using right here in this video, here are the color codes for the top one and for the bottom one. After we have this applied, what I'm going to do is click OK right click copy layer style go to the layer below it right click paste layer style and there we go now i'm going to double click on the bottom layer go to color overlay and uncheck it 
And what this will do is it will create a diversion between the top and bottom layers so it stands out more into our face cam. Now the next thing I'm going to do is merge these two layers and go onto Google. And you may ask me, why do you want to go on Google while working in Photoshop? Well, this is my special technique for making really cool face cams. What I like to do is find any type of HD wallpaper on Google and just copy it into Photoshop. So I'm going to right click and go to copy image, go back to Photoshop, press Ctrl and V so it pastes it into our document and then after I do that I like to press Ctrl and T and make it big enough to where we can really see it uh, the main stuff into the image so just stretch it out just a little bit press the check mark button after that I'm gonna press Ctrl and U on our keyboard turn down the saturation all the way click OK double click on our layers change the opacity to about 50% just so we can see exactly what we're doing and this is where you need to position it on your face cam. So the background essentially is going to be a texture for our face cam. Instead of using a stock texture that's symmetrical all the way around, I don't like to do that. I like more of a grunge look. So I just like to do this technique. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag along to my face cam and uh, just see what I like and the type of texture that I like. So I will be right back. Okay guys, so I have found a texture style that I like. As we can see, if we zoom in, this is what we're going to see into our face cam once we get rid of the rest of it. So I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and 5.8 pixels is fine. Anywhere between five and six pixels is what I usually go with. Click OK. Once we've applied the blur, I'm going to go back to our face cam layer, holding control on my keyboard, and I'm going to click that layer and it should select the layer for us. Then I'm going to go to my rectangular marquee tool, right click, select inverse, go back to our background or texture layer, and press delete. And this will apply the texture to our face cam box. Now don't worry, I know it looks kind of weird right now, but I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna drag the red layer above that layer. Then I'm going to go to the blending options by double clicking and going to change it to overlay. Now this looks pretty cool, but I will say it is a bit dark. So all we have to do again, create another layer above these two layers that we just made holding control on our keyboard and clicking on the layer once again. I'm going to go to our brush tool, making sure the hardness is at 0% and making sure our color is white. I'm going to go around the entire face cam. Once I've done that, I'm going to press control and D on our keyboard to deselect what we just selected. And then I'm going to go to the blending options once again by double clicking and changing it from normal to overlay. We're not soft light. Soft light works too, but I like overlay just because it adds a bit of a better effect in my opinion. Then I'm going to click OK. And as we can see, it's lightened up quite a bit. Now, even though it has lightened up, it does look a bit wonky. So what I'll do is I'll actually change the opacity from 52% to around 40%. Yeah, that looks good. And then I'm going to take my eraser and with the opacity set to about 49 to 50%, uh, just for the purposes, I'll make it perfect, 50% press the enter key and I'm going to delete a little bit of these random uh, spontaneous light bursts that we have on our face cam just to make it flow a little bit better. The next step after we do all of that is to create another layer and drag it underneath all of our face cam stuff that we've already made. Holding control again on our keyboard, I'm going to select the rectangle one layer and then on the bottom layer that we just made, I'm going to go to the gradient tool and create a gradient underneath everything. Once that's applied, I'm going to merge all of these layers together, holding shift from the very top and clicking the bottom layer, right click, merge layers, and it should create the face cam that we just made onto one layer. The next step is to add a few effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to double click, uh, go to bevel and emboss and just play around with these effects. You guys don't have to do this. I'm just going to do it because I think it looks pretty cool and why not? The next step after we've finished all of the layer effects is go and create another layer and we're going to create a layer and place for our text. So what I'm going to do is go to the pen tool. Before we add the text to our face cam, we have to add a place for the text to go, right? So what I'm going to do is create a random shape and this can vary depending on what you choose. So I'm just going to create a random shape right here. So I'll be right back. After you've created the shape for your text to go onto, what I like to do is center it on our face cam. So again, holding control on our keyboard, click the layer underneath it, 
go to the move tool and while this layer that we just made is selected go to the aligning tools at the top of your screen and press the middle one right here on the right side and it should align it to the center now once we've done that we have to make it look like the face cam so the best way to do that is just repeat the steps that we've already done Okay guys, so I've created a space for our text to go on our face cam. Now I'm gonna create a new layer, go to the text tool, and go to a font that we like. So I'm just gonna choose Jersey Sharp for this example. If you want a link to the font, I will leave a link to the font in the description below so you can download and follow along for yourself. I'm just gonna click anywhere on the screen and type the text that we want. So I'll just put my channel name for purposes of this video, Control T to transform, holding Shift and Alt, drag from the corners to make it even and just fit it into our little spot. There we go. And once again, I'm going to control and click on our face cam layer and center it with our face cam by pressing the aligning tool at the top of our screen. After that, I'm going to add some layer styles to our text to make it pop a little bit. So let's do that. A nice gradient overlay looks pretty nice. Maybe some inner shadow. Actually, no, that doesn't look good. Some inner glow is probably a, a better option. And there we have it. I'm actually going to make the text a slight bit smaller. Why not? And there we go. Now, the next thing is to add some design to our face cam. You can totally go out on YouTube or Twitch and use this face cam like it is already. But I'm going to add some design because that's just what I like to do. So I'm going to create a new layer. Go to the pen tool. Where is it? Here it is. I'm going to zoom in on the corners of the face cam. I'm going to click on the top, click onto the edge right here that connects the side to the top, and then actually holding shift, I'm going to do that so that it's even. And then I'm going to hold shift and drag down onto the side. And here is where you make the design. So a good area to do this, I'd say a little further out, something like this, just use your pen tool. You can click here, you can click here, even here would look uh, half decent. So I'm just going to click around this area right here and I'm going to connect the pen tool. Then I'm going to right click and go to fill path with our foreground color, which is white. Click OK and it creates the designs for us. Right click, delete path and there we go. And I'm actually going to press Control and J on our keyboard, Control T, right click, flip horizontal holding shift, I'm going to drag it to the other side so that it's even. There we go. And just align it with the side of the face cam. This one's aligned as well. Yep. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these two layers, press control J once again, press control T, right click, flip vertical and drag them both down. And here we will see that it looks pretty cool when all four of them are in the corner. I'm gonna merge these two layers once again, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing, but instead of the corners of the face cam, I'm going to do it on our box that we created. Okay, so we've created the design on our text box, and I'm gonna press Control J once again, Control T, right click flip horizontal and I'm going to put it on the other side just to make it symmetrical if we zoom in here we can make sure that it fits properly there we go and as we can see we have a cool design if you want to import your logo onto the face cam just import your logo by pressing file open and then choose the logo from your computer just drag it into the file using the move tool now obviously my logo doesn't match the face cam color that I've chosen but you see the purpose I'm just gonna put it up top and there we go. So I'm gonna actually make it a little bit smaller. And there you have it. I'm gonna center it as well. There we go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. And if you want a more advanced tutorial where I show you how to really add more effects to this, I will definitely make that if you guys support this video enough. I have a bunch of other Photoshop tutorials on screen right now in case you're interested. So make sure you check those out. 
Good luck making face cams for your videos or your live streams or for whatever you choose to make it. My name's Delvage and I'm out. Peace.